Hello, 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 and welcome to this episode of Musically Cogitating, a podcast about the relevance and importance of living in contemporary music of all kinds, and about how that music impacts our everyday lives. I am your host, Siad Wells. Thank you for joining me here today for another episode of this what I think is a really great podcast. As always, any relevant and important links will be in the show notes. Just wanted to remind you that you can always get in touch with me if you'd like to be guest on the show, if you have some feedback, or just to say hi via direct message on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, you can send me an email using the website's contact Uh, submission form so i checked all of those places regularly and yeah just look forward to hearing your feedback if you have any and don't forget you can pick up some musically cogitating swag which is the sticker and bookmark pack for five dollars using the link to the store in the show notes today i'm going to continue this series on career exploration and I want to think about administration artistic administration arts admin that type of things and it's going to be about the mechanics of a career in administrative in administration and what that might look like my very detailed thoughts on arts leadership which is different from arts administration will come in a different episode, not a part of this series because I have lots of thoughts and I want to share them with you, but they will come later. I always wanted to work in administration and I thought, you know, long before it became popular to say that someone's going to have a quote unquote portfolio career, I just, I I kind of always thought that it would be part of what I did, part of my work. And I wasn't really sure how I would do that and, or what that would look like or what it would mean or how I would get there because the field of arts administration is really, really big, (laughs) much bigger than probably many of us kind of think about or, or realize, but I just, so I just didn't really know what I was going to do or how that was going to look. I think that the journey that we as people who work in arts administration, the journey that we go on to get there varies widely. And so there just didn't always seem as though there's a pathway laid down or kind of figured out for people who are interested in pursuing that type of career. But I knew that it was gonna be important for me as an artist to know all of the ins and outs of what it meant to work in the arts, including, you know, being an artist and producing and creating art, but also including, you know, the other side of that. What does it take to make sure the art gets to people and that people can see it and that people uh, enjoy it and all of that stuff. As consumers of art and art goers, so much of what we see is artists facing or artists forward. But there are so many people who go into making all of that happen. And you could say, some people might say they're, you know, unsung heroes. And I don't know that they're un, un, unsung heroes so much as they are just the people who enjoy and want to work in that particular field. So that's what they do. And of course, sure, you can you can make an argument that the artist facing or artist forward part is the most important part or that that is the point. But, you know, there are other people who are involved in making art happen. And a lot of those people at one time or another, or currently, are artists. And so their work is important and meaningful 
as well. You know, from the person who sets up the web page to the person who booked the show to the person who designed the flyer that you got in the mail or the person who's helping you find your seat. There's just so many people involved in making that happen. And believe it or not, this might be a hot take for you. A lot of those people enjoy their jobs. I remember in another episode I talked about, you know, how they say those who can't do teach and some people kind of use that same idea when talking about those of us who work in arts admin. But again, there are people who actually just enjoy working in administration. And side note, there's going to be another episode in the series, which is going to be the last episode in the series for now about production and jobs and careers that are more specific to to that which because I don't think that necessarily working in arts admin always means that you also work in production in fact I know that it doesn't so there will be another episode about that people who work in admin they want to do it it's not a fall back plan it's a viable career and a viable pathway forward and initially for me as a young music student maybe I thought that yeah admin working in uh, an office or having a a job with a set schedule such as nine to five instead of you know teaching being like the maybe nine to five but 7 30 to 30 kind of thing I thought that it was going to be a fallback plan and I in all of my kind of type A glory, as we'll call it, I I knew that I needed to have multiple options and ideas for my future. And I wanted to kind of have like a, a future proof plan in case whatever I was pursuing at that moment or time didn't really work out. So this plan went as so far as I applied and it was accepted to some arts administration master's programs when I was kind of deciding if, you know, am I going to pursue a second master's degree in this and, and kind of go this way, or am I going to go and get a doctorate? And we all know when it, where that ended up. I currently work on a doctorate. So it, that's just what I wanted to pursue. But, you know, I did see admin as a really viable career path. And now I just see it as part of my work as an artist. And I know that I would also just generally speaking, need to learn some level of admin and organizational leadership, because I just think that we all need to be a little bit more aware as artists than some people are. And I knew that that was going to help support. And ultimately I, what I think makes me a a better artist. If you want a career in music, I will say you will either need to be able to do it all on your own and, you know, administrate and administer and organize your entire career from the kind of administration perspective, or you'll need to pay someone to do that. And paying someone isn't really a viable option for a lot of us. So we kind of end up doing a lot of our own kind of personal career, you know, organizing and administering and administrating and leading. And some people sure may not see responding to an email as administration necessarily, or, you know, self-management that's because that's just a part of their work. But I think there's different types of tasks and there's different, you know, kind of levels of involvement with all of those tasks. So for instance, you know, I don't really have management or anything like that. So I I do all the tasks, but for someone who has management, they might not be as involved with sort of all of the organizing and, you know, booking the flights and negotiating the contracts and things like that. Whereas, you know, myself and a lot of people that I know, that is, you know, what, what we do as artists, full-time artists or, you know, so for instance, I do know that all of admin is, is very interesting and it is very particular and 
it is something that a lot of people don't really have a lot of training for, which we will talk about, you know, in a second. But the way that I kind of learned and started down this path initially in university was just being involved with a lot of different student organizations on campus and they're not always the most organized groups they're not always the groups that have the most clear vision and mission for what they're going to do for campus for the campus community and for students but i think that they were in a lot of ways super super helpful in showing me how to do things how to turn in paperwork, how to fill out paperwork, how to ask people sometimes for money, how to apply for various things. And so I, I think a lot of people might not see, you know, campus university type positions as training and leadership, but it really does have an impact on the rest of your life. And although that you know, some people might not call that the real world. College, I firmly believe, is the real world. And so what you're doing does matter and does have an impact on your your future and your success. Also, things like internships really can have a positive impact and influence on, you know, what you want to do in the field of of arts admin so that's where I feel like I learned a lot of what I know and also volunteering with other groups in your community just generally so it doesn't have to be that it's a group that works specifically with the arts but it can be any sort of group that needs help whether it's in their front office or the back office or anything and they just are looking for somebody to help a lot of those skills that you learn in the kind of office management or or just in the office environment in general can really be transferable. And so taking that knowledge and learning that, I think it helps to, to make you stronger and a better administrator, organized person, should you choose to kind of pursue that career. Now, as I said, I do a lot of the various types of administrative work for the various projects that I have. So whether that be, you know, a lot of the work with the Marjorie Guitar Collective or, you know, in my job, or I work kind of uh, with several local groups here in Austin with various parts of their admin staff, you know, I do all different kinds of things. So And and they're kind of like, I have a short list of kind of like random things, but also things that maybe you think of or maybe you don't think of when it comes to having a job or a career in some type of artistic administrative field. But communication, I will say, is one. And by communication, I mean email, which is the bane of most people's existence and you may not see this as necessarily an admin task per se but you know the degree like I said the degree to which you're involved with your own email as an artist or where at an organization where you work can vary widely and so communication email and all of those things are parts of administration that are really important Um, Of course, there's this kind of subfield of marketing and communications, which another subfield below that, subcategory below that would be probably social media as well. You know, there is this whole field of development and fundraising, which of course the task is to find the money to support the various types of projects, which in and of itself is an entire episode or series of episodes that I will do at some point there in the administrative field is production so who's producing the show who is making it happen is there someone setting up the lights is there someone walking to the walking the person on stage you know all of those people work in production I would say more so than our dive men although that is kind of a an adjacent or parallel field which of course I'll talk about in the next episode and then there's there's broadly 
operations so it is i would say the kind of the glue that holds all of the things together so it's the person who makes the things happen it's the group of people who do the spreadsheets and keeping the books maybe and things like that so those are just some of the kinds of tasks but also the the kind of subcategories and fields that are broadly within the arts administration field for a symphony there might be hundreds of people working in the administration of the symphony alone and those those jobs are all important and crucial to making sure that the art can happen and can continue to thrive. And also there are tons and tons of small arts organizations who would not exist without volunteers. So people who are basically volunteer administrators who do their work for free and carry out the mission of the organization because they just really enjoy it they see it as a necessary part of their community and they want it to continue. So there's of course this really big broad variety of people, some of whom are doing it as a job where they are paid a salary like myself. And then there are some people who do it just for the love of the art. And I think that regardless, people deserve to be paid and compensated for their time because you know, volunteer administrators, although they may enjoy it, that is a lot of time and that is a real job. And so we should support the arts, of course, in a way that allows everyone, artists and the administrative and production staff people to be compensated and supported. One of the other interesting parts of this field of administration that I wanted to talk about was training. And I know that I talked about kind of how I, I saw or how I recognized how I was trained in a way, you know, volunteering for student groups and community organizations and so much. But, you know, I will be the first to say that I have a whole job in arts administration, a whole career, and I have zero degrees in this particular career field. Yes, I do have training in the arts broadly speaking in an adjacent, what they call a career field, I guess, but you know, I, I don't have a degree in arts administration. I've done a lot of professional development programs and those have all been so, so helpful in showing me, you know, what it is that I'm interested in and what I want to do, but also just just training me to be in a place to start a career in the field of arts administration. But, you know, I don't have any sort of formal school university training. And I think that that's pretty common actually for people who work in arts admin, not to have a degree or a lot of formal training in this particular career field. Now, I think there are a lot of people who work in arts admin who actually probably have business training, which again is not exactly arts admin, but it's one of those kind of adjacent fields. And so they have probably more training in that way than than I do from my performance degrees but there aren't as there definitely are not as many people who have a master's in arts admin they might have some people if they're lucky they might have like a concentration or a minor in it if their school offered it but a lot of schools aren't really equipped to have that and so they just don't as I stated, a lot of people get their experience through volunteering, internships, professional development, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that while the field of arts administration has been around for a long time, you know, people have always been helping to organize and orchestrate the art happening, the professionalization and normalization of the field of arts admin is probably fairly young. And also the theory behind the field is really sorry, like kind of new and it's always changing and transforming. And so I think that's why a lot of us who work in, in arts admin now may not have that 
sort of university credential or seal of approval. And is that a good or a bad thing? Well, yes. Good because people are interested in doing it and passionate about the work and they want it to continue, but bad because I see a lot of people who are in positions in the arts admin field, especially in leadership, who have no training and it shows. So I'm going to leave that at that. But yeah, there are a lot of people who I'm not sure that they should really be the tippy top of their organizations leading and doing those types of things. But you know, we have to make it work with what we have. And so they're of course just doing the best that they can, but you can and should look for some sort of professional development or volunteering internship opportunities and things like that or just reading books learning for instance if you are interested in pursuing a career in artistic administration arts admin is of course not limited to you know performing arts organizations or, or music education organizations by any means um, I mean, you might consider a higher ed institution a music education organization because loosely it is, but those people, you know, deans and heads and directors of schools of music and things like that, you know, those people are arts administrators and as, as well. And none of this is specific to music either, right? In dance, in the book arts, in visual and uh, other contemporary arts, in film, you know, all of those fields, all of this art requires people who want to work and are interested in administration. And many of the people who do work in administration are also practicing artists. You know, now we live in a world where you can do both. Contrary to what many people might say, you can be an artist and also someone who works a day job or, you know, who works a job, a position in arts administration. And I think it's actually important to be able to do so. They really do help inform one another. And so I want more people to try arts admin. You may not like it and that's fine, but I think exploring that as a career path instead of teaching or doing something else that you're not really passionate about and that you're not good at doing and that you don't care about isn't going to be helpful for you or the people around you in the long run. So that doesn't mean to start a whole new nonprofit. Don't do that without a lot of mentorship and guidance, but that does mean find an opportunity to be involved, to have some training, to learn and to grow and to work as part of this field as an artist and administrator. So those are some thoughts on arts admin. Of course, it's time for the music recommendation of the week. And this week's music recommendation of the week is going to be a new album that just dropped by reed and mcqueen so this is a guitar duo and it's kind of strange because neither it's not strange but it's interesting that neither of them really only focus in this kind of americana jazz style but their album as a guitar duo is focused in that kind of americana style which is really fun so yes um reed mcqueen they just recently dropped an album and the Reed McQueen duo. And so the specific track that I'm going to recommend for you from the album is Flow, which is really great. So it'll always, of course, be linked in the accompanying Spotify playlist. As I mentioned at the top of the show, don't forget to follow the podcast on social media and to visit the website 
www.musicallycogitating.com. There is also a newsletter, which you can subscribe to, where you will receive some additional updates about the show. And if you are listening to the show on Apple Podcast, please, 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 please give us a like and rating and review as it helps for other people like yourself to find the show and it also helps me to know, you know, what you're thinking about the show. So if you're like, see, I really would like to hear you talk about this or, you know, that didn't sound so great. It's also a way for you to leave feedback for me so that I can continue to improve the show for all of the episodes to come. If you are really interested in supporting the show further, you can buy us a coffee or, you know, make a small donation to the show using the support the show link in the show notes. So that is all I have for you today. I will be back in two weeks with the next episode of the Musically Cogitating Podcast. Until then.